Let us now look at the advanced monitoring and reporting lesson. Lesson 12. We're going to look at the home monitors and reports pages. We'll look at setting the preferences, viewing and managing the logs, configuring and viewing notifications, creating and viewing the reports. Let's look first at the home monitors and reports pages. So these are the three different pages in the SEPM where you can gather the information about your network environment, your security risks, and details about the client logging. The home page provides the real-time snapshot of your current network security status. The monitors page gives you access to the real-time snapshot of uh, information coming up from the clients. So risk distribution and uh, false positives and details of applications have been accessed and so on. The reports page enables you to schedule reports and run ad hoc reports based on the information gathered in the database. So monitoring endpoint protection, here we are looking at the virus and risks activity summary and you can change using the drop down the period of time that you wish to gather this information by. So the logs and reports are where the administrators would go to to determine certain answers to the types of questions that they would be asking like what computers are infected and which ones need scanning, uh, what risks are detected on your network. The monitoring the security status of your network can be done from the home page. We can see the count of detected viruses and other security risks that have been picked up. We can uh, look at the number of unprotected computers on your network and view the number of computers with up-to-date definitions and the definition spread. We can also check our licensing status. On the monitors page we've got all the graphs for the risk distribution and the logs and the status of recently, recently issued commands. And we can set up notifications here. And I say in the reports page, you can run all the reports, be the scheduled or the ad hoc. We have different types of reports being daily summaries, weekly summaries, to gather all that information for analysis. Let's have a look at setting the preferences. On the home page, which is your real-time snapshot of your current network status, we have on the top right the preferences in blue. If we drill into that, uh, we can then set the thresholds of the security status that we wish to set. The view details will enable us to have a look at the uh, analysis of information that has set this particular status. In this case, the status is good, it's green, so therefore you won't see any red options in the viewing of the details. We can see on the right-hand side also our license status, and we can run the licensing details, which will run the licensing report. Viewing the security status details, here on the home page we can now see a different snapshot where the security status is now attention needed, it's red. We can view the details to see why that has become red. We could look down on the bottom right hand side for our favorite reports. These can be tailored. This is the only thing that can be changed on this particular screen. We can go in and edit and change to our three favored reports. These are specific to the user logged in. So we're going into our setting preferences from the home and monitor summary page now. And we can see on the time range, we can specify the period of time that we wish to gather the information. We can set it to 12 or 24 hours. We can change the auto refresh rate from 15 minutes. We can decide on which types of notifications we wish to see. And the action summary display. On the preferences for security status, we can choose the thresholds that we decide to be uh, good or bad. So at this point, we're saying the percentage of computers reporting auto-protect off is set to 10. Now, when this threshold is reached and, and numbers go over and above 10, at that point, it will turn the status to be red. 
So you can adjust these settings for the uh, computers reporting download insight off, the sonar off, the network threat protection off, etc. And also the virus definitions being out of date and decide how many days make them out of date. We can set preferences for the logs and reports. We can decide on what date format that we're interested in and the date separator. We can choose how large the, row, uh, the, uh, the reports look like with the number of rows in the report table and the subnets or customize those subnets if you wish. And you can set up active filters for your reports, it's filtering the information that you wish to see. So viewing the monitor summary in the risks tab now, we can see the risk distribution. We could see the new risks and also the sonar information. Under the network threat protection area, we can look at the information from top targets attacked by either groups, subnets, clients or ports. Let's look at managing and viewing those logs now. So the logs is all the information that's being uplifted from the clients up to the SEPM database. And that provides far more detail than normal reports. So you can drill down and do, do a lot of troubleshooting with the log information. You can investigate the threats and verify certain event histories. The logs are provided for the SEPMs and clients that communicate with those SEPMs. You can set up log filters and say so you could have the default filter which has no um, restrictions at all or customize the filter to be only certain types of information, maybe only infected computers. So here we are on the monitors page and we've selected the logs tab. So when we're wanting to view the logs, we need to choose the log type. On the drop down, here we're seeing audit at the moment, there's a number of different log types available. And these are the same types for the reports. This will filter the type of information we're going to be viewing. We could then restrict that even further with maybe a saved filter that we've created. So here we're seeing what saved filters or filter settings we'd like to use. You could set a certain time range if you wish to, or set even a, a site, server or user. You can export the log information. Maybe you wish to view it in some sort of comma delimited file to be imported into a third party, maybe a spreadsheet. You could dump the file or you could put it out to a syslog server that you've previously created. And here we can see the different log types that I mentioned. In this table we can see the log type on the left and the information that's gathered or seen when we select it on the right. We can view these audit logs. We can look at the details of specific lines and here we can see we've highlighted one particular entry and we can see further information about it. We can export this information in that comma delimited or out to a dump file. Here we're looking at the computer status log. We can see on the left hand side the green diamond. That means there's no new infections. If you were to see a red diamond there, that would mean that there's a new infection and, and the administrator would typically have to take an action. Once the administrator maybe has taken the action, they might want to clear the infected status, which is the task at the top. You can run certain commands on selected systems here. You could highlight the uh, computer that you wish to check and run a command for scanning it. Here are the system log options. So on the log type, we've chosen system this time. And we've said we want to use the log content. We can either choose administrator, clients, server activity, server activity only, client activity only, or enforcer activity. The enforcer activity is particular to the NAC, the network access control. And uh, you'd have to have that license and the enforcers set up to gather any information there. We can set up uh, exceptions from these log events. 
Here we've got the exception types and the log types on the right hand side. So you may wish to create a scan exception for certain types of application or tamper protection control for instance. Let's look at the notifications now. There are a number of different types of notifications that are already configured and you just need to choose that type of notification that you wish to receive the message or information about. So here we can see the different types of notifications. We may wish to be warned about a new learned application, for instance, or a risk outbreak, or possibly a, a virus definitions out of date. And these then can be configured to send emails or pop-ups to the relevant people concerned. So here we're looking at the current notification conditions that have been set up. We can see we've got a notification to warn us about unmanaged or uncliented machines. And we're adding the in entry into the database and we're running a particular batch file probably to install the client. We can see on the other actions that are available we could email to an email address or just edit, add the entry in the database. Look at the old definitions notification type and there we can set certain conditions that uh, make that notification valid. So now we're saying if two computers with virus definitions older than seven days, that will spark this notification to add a database entry. We can see the tasks on the top where we can add, edit or delete the notifications. Here we're viewing the notifications, so we've uh, looked at the details of the particular notification and we can see that we have that red triangle on the left hand side as an acknowledgement. That's warning us that we have something new that's occurred here that hasn't been cleared by any administrator. So it's a new warning telling us that virus definitions are not up to date. We can go in and look at the details of that which is showing us the information below. And there's our acknowledging the notifications. So an administrator has seen this new notification, they hopefully have taken some action, and now they need to acknowledge it to change it back to green to prevent maybe a colleague from doing exactly the same steps. Creating and viewing reports. So reports are a very useful way of gathering information and ensuring that you have a, a regular feed of detail going to uh, the people concerned. So here we could set up a scheduled report and you could run them at a defined time. Maybe you wish to have a report sitting on your um, mail first thing Monday morning about all of the activity over the weekend for instance. You can base it on certain defined criteria and filter it and then send it as an email. Here's the table that gives you the report types on the left hand side. We could be specific about maybe the risk events or maybe system events. And you choose what type of report type you're interested in. It may be that you don't want to run or rely on scheduled reports only and run your own quick reports or ad hoc reports. And these could be, for instance, this one is the computers by last scan time. And this will do a snapshot of the data that's currently in that database at the time of running the report. Notice we can print and we can save these for later reference. Here we're looking at the scheduled reports tab. Here we can see we've got a couple of reports created. We've got the weekly status and the daily scan. And we're specifying the schedule of when to run them. Again, we have tasks there we can add, edit, edit the filters, and delete them. Here we're looking at uh, the scheduled reports now. We're enabling the scheduled report, so we're creating a new one. We've specified the report type of computer status report, and we've selected the report from the drop-down within the computer status report listing for the virus definitions distribution. We can then apply a saved filter. In this case, we're leaving it as the default. We can choose to uh, certain recipients to receive this report. And if so, we need to put in the email address. And we wish to decide on how frequently we wish to run it. We've chosen to run it every seven days, and we set it at a certain date and time. 
So that brings us to the end of the reports lesson. We should have learned how to view the monitors and the summary and the view and manage the report logs and how to configure and view the notifications.